Hello, hi there. I hope you're all fine. This is a small video on some sampling issues that we encountered among graduates recently, mainly concerning around sample size issues when it comes to quantitative research. When is, for example, your sample big enough? And what does it mean if your sample is smaller than expected? These questions cannot always directly be answered with a straight one size fits all answer, but I put together some really important considerations in this video. So first, as a bachelor's student, you are expected to become a so-called reflective practitioner. This means that when it comes to your sampling, you should be able to critically describe and assess the representativeness of your sample. How well does your sample actually reflect your population? How have people from your population been selected for your sample? Did they all have the same chance of being selected for the sample? Which sampling strategy have you applied? And so on and so forth, etc., etc. For this, you can easily recall all the materials that you may still have from IA year two, because that is the year where we've actually put some effort in it. Now, during your bachelor thesis, you will find that it is very difficult to actually uh, produce a perfect sample. So it needs to be considered when you are writing your bachelor thesis. How could flaws in your sampling have affected your results, so to say? If you have, for example, sent out a questionnaire via your social network, you already have a big bias in your sample before even considering your sample size. And in addition, your sampling determines the quality of your data. So acknowledge this. If you know that your sample is too small or not very representative, show this in your discussion and be careful with the conclusions that you can draw. Then, about the size of your sample. There are all kinds of tools that can help you figure out how big your sample actually should be. For example, you could check out the guidelines provided in your research book. This is either Gray doing research in the real world or research methods for business students uh, written by Saunders. But there's also all kinds of online applications. So you, you have these sample size calculators like what you see on the screen here from uh, surveysystems.com. They all require to fill in uh, the actual population size, of course. So you should have knowledge about your population and how big it actually uh, is. If you do not know this exactly, you can set it to a very high number, like 100,000. Then you also always have to consider the so-called confidence level and the confidence interval. But what are those exactly? So let's have a look at that. So let's have a look at an example. Let's say we are interested in how satisfied people are about online support. And we want to record this on a 10 point Likert scale, one being not at all satisfied up to 10 being very satisfied. Our population is pretty big, so we decide to pick a sample. Now, let's say that in our sample, we find an average value of seven. Now, this does not mean that the population mean is also seven. In fact, the mean of the population can be a bit more or a bit less. And that more or less is, of course, relevant because we are interested in the population mean, not in the sample mean. The confidence interval expresses this range. Based on your sample, it is reasonable to say that the mean satisfaction lies in this example between six and eight. And the width of the confidence interval is determined for a large extent to the size of your sample. So if your sample size goes down, the confidence interval increases and that in turn affects the accuracy of how well your sample estimates the true values in your population. So now we've seen in short what that confidence interval basically means. But even with this confidence interval in mind, there is still a chance that the true population mean value does not fall 
within this interval. So you also want to be sure that this chance is not so very high. And this is where the confidence level comes in. You can say that you want to be confident to a certain degree that the true population value lies within the interval of your sample. This confidence level is usually set to 95%. And this means that if you would take not one sample from your population, but 100, that in 95 of these samples, the true population value would indeed lie within your confidence interval. So you may want to pause the video at this particular time and let this sink in. So let's go back to the calculator that we can find online. Look at the sample size given at a particular confidence level and confidence interval. You see for a large population that we need a sample size of 383. We also see that the confidence level is set at 95% and that we have a confidence interval of 5. We also see on the slide um, the formula that is behind this. You may find this formula rewritten in any other form, but it all comes down to the same calculation. This calculation has also been used by the tables that you can find in your research book from Gray or from Saunders. Now, look at what happens with the confidence interval when we start lowering our sample size. It gets larger and larger. So again, less people in your sample simply increases this interval. In our example, that could mean that we still find seven as a mean in our sample, but then plus or minus a lot more. So not a range from six to eight anymore, but maybe a range from five to nine, or even a range from four to 10. And that means our sample becomes a somewhat weak estimator for what we actually have in our population. These issues, of course, need to be addressed in your bachelor thesis. If you do that correctly, then you show that you are becoming a so-called reflective practitioner. Then finally, on this slide, I've put together some really helpful resources on this. The first two um, are about videos that you can find in the IA year two and um, some general sampling issues. The third and the fourth are videos on confidence intervals and uh, more about a deeper understanding of the relation between sample size, confidence interval and level of confidence. So I hope this all helps and I hope that this video also shows that it is more than sample size alone. It is about your awareness, your reflective abilities on all the issues when it comes to sampling. Not only the size, but maybe even more importantly, how representative is your sample actually? Bye bye.